so many things. Okay, I'm going to go over a couple of pictures, guys, from chapter four, like we've done, and highlight a few things. Uh, so do me a favor, go back to chapter four, or forward to chapter four, if you are there. And we talked about yesterday, guys, we talked about circuits, brand circuits. And this is just a quick review. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures here, really. Um, a brand circuit. And we we said um, we said the brand circuit. If you have a, the the rating of the circuit is actually the rating of the overcompression device. So first, my friend, this circuit is a 20 amp circuit. Why? Because it's the overcompression device here is a 20 amp, and overcompression device is a 20 amp. So this makes it a 20 amp circuit, regardless of the conductor size. So this conductor can be it has to be at least 12 but I can go all the way to number 10 or number eight for voltage drop and the circuit's still a 20 amp circuit, okay? Any question guys about this one? And I, with the brand circuit, I hope, I'm gonna review this one quick because it's very important. I hope that you, you realize we have the 15 amp brand circuits, you have the 20 amp brand circuit, you have the 30 amp brand circuit and the 40 amp brand circuit. These are the single most important four brand circuits you're gonna do it in residential, in residential, right? And I don't know if you guys remember, we said 20s is by NEC. You use 20s by NEC. Wherever NEC told you to use a 20 amp circuit, you have to use it. Any example where we use it? Kitchen, bathroom, laundry room, and you also fill, you use it for equipment. So some pumps, so I'm gonna use this one for also uh, I'm going to call it mechanical equipment. So that's where you use the 20 amp circuits. Okay, cool. Let's go to the 15 amp circuit. 15 amp circuits, um, general, uh, so I'm going to say receptacles. Uh, all receptacles that's not required to be on a 20 amp circuit, you put them in a 15 amp circuit. And also lights. Light. And again, I can't emphasize guys, we are talking residential. We're talking residential. Zach, you come to this building that we're in right now, you, number 12, you grab it, throw it out the window, number, I mean, number 14, and you use only number 12 for lights, commercial. Okay, any question about 15 amp brand circuit and 20 amp brand circuit? No, let's go to 30. 30 amp brand circuit is in residential. We use it for the following. In our project, you're gonna use it for AC, almost always, residential ACs um, units are a 30 amp circuit. And 40 amp circuit as range. Done. You guys have done circuiting all your uh, all your equipment. Done. Really done. Does that make sense? All the circuits that you need in residential. And oh, by the way, uh, Chris, this will cover also. I bet you that will cover at least circuiting wise at least another 40 percent of commercial industrial buildings. They have special loads there and so forth. Any question guys about this? So that's what I want to highlight here. Moving on to, um, so we talked about the 20 amp circuit going from a J box and conductor must have minimum amp circuit. And here's what we talked guys about uh, 20 amp, the rating of the conductor is the same. Um, the rating of the circuit follows the rating of the con of the overcompetition device, not the conductor size. Um, had you been guys electricians, you will talk a little bit about tabs and rules. And I was talking to um, Ashley this morning. And if you are if you're doing wiring outdoor, I hate the tabs first. But if you're doing tabs, you guys know later on we're going to talk about tabs. But if you're doing tabs, this connection is a very interesting connection for you right in here because you can bring look what you can you can bring a 500 kcm right here and take each one of these and take a 4 out, um, out of tag, tag them, a 4 out, out of it, so you can go to different directions. There are rules for tab, rules for tab. If you're the outdoor, you can tab a lot of stuff. So this connection is very good. The rest of these connections, guys, you, you see these always on equipments and terminals. This is another commonly used for ground, and you can use it also for fade. And these are the most common wire nuts that we use for connection. Who cares for you being designers? Electricians, you guys know how to do them. For designers, as a project manager, you need to know a few things about these connections, where to use them and how to identify them. When it comes to the hardware, guys, there's so much hardware. I mean, it's, so I mentioned this one being we are teaching you as designers 
um, and I'm sure a lot, a few of you guys have used it. Um, Nubbin tube, this is your house, right? I have a couple of nice, nice pictures that I use, guys. Nubbin tube uh, receptacles. Nubbin tube, the way we use your nub wiring, your designers, you will never specify nubbin tube, but if you enter a building that has nubbin tube, your obligation to, if you want to tag into it, you have to bring a box, bring the nubbin tube to a box, and bring your Romex cable and go from there. You can't terminate, if you can't, see if I want to make a, by the way, if, yeah, if the walls are open like this, you're supposed to remove it. Remove it and do rewiring, if the walls are open. If you have an open wall. Um, and rewire. If the walls are not open, then you can tab to wherever you are. You can put a J box and tab and, um, and tab from that J box. So being you are not electricians, um, uh, line to ground and different loads. This is a nice, um, you, you can't believe guys, in residential, if you don't understand this circuit, you will be confused for the rest of your life, even in commercial. There are, in residential, there are two types of, only in the US, um, there are two types of voltages that we bring to residential, as you guys know. Uh, we bring 120 and 240. So here's your option. Your option, when you have, you can you can connect. Can you guys see this connection? You can connect equipment, uh, 120, uh, 240. This equipment is uh, a 240 equipment teacher. Or you can connect the equipment from here to here. They'll get you a 120 volt. Um, and this is a 120 volt, right? And this is also, can you see the connection from here to here? This is your 240 volt. Now, what's the difference between this load and this load? This load needs a neutral, and this load doesn't. So this makes it a 240, 120 volt. Typical of uh, dryers. Is that a camel motor in there? Uh, M is for the motor. This, this is typical for a dryer. This is a dryer. This is the, the, the typical for a dryer, guys, what they do, they bring a heating element, they burn, they burn electricity at 240, but the, you know how the uh, uh, dryers work, yeah, right? You have to rotate as you create the heat, you have to rotate the thing so you can dry it, right? So the rotation happens from a motor and the heat happens from um, a heating element. So that's why when we go to the dryers, you guys have how many conductors you're going to send to the dryers? Three conductors. Why three? Two hots and a neutral. Two hots and a neutral. Any question? So I want to bring to your attention, guys, when you start, range is the same thing. Range is the same thing. Range is 24120. You bring a 24120, basically three con four conductors with a ground. Three conductors with a ground. Any question about... Typical, typical how we connect all our loads is typical connection for residential. If I take you guys right now to our house, would you be able to wire based on this? The first, you have a piece of equipment. Our house is done with here. You have a piece of equipment. The first thing you want to look at it, is it 120 up? I'm going to grab one hot and a neutron and power it. Done. Is it 240 up? Is it 240? 120 means it needs 240 only, like heaters. Like uh, uh, air conditioning, you need 240 only. Just that's it, 240. They cook themselves at 240. Uh, then you have two two wires. Does it need 240 as well as 122? Then that will be a typical dryer or range, or range. Not the way we're showing a motor in range. There's more, there's a couple of fans, but yeah, typical dryer range. Any question guys about this connection? I can't believe how nice this picture is. Summarizing basically everything that we do in residential. When we go to commercial, it, it starts getting a little bit more interesting because now you have you have three types of loads you can connect to a commercial circuit. Line to neutral, right? Everybody knows that. Or three phase, or what's the second option? Two phase. So if, if, I, have, if I have a 208-120 system, I can connect 120, or I can connect three phase, three phase, to the equipment, or I can connect only two phases out of the three phase. So the three types of load. We'll get into that one, guys, when we reach it. Um, okay, um, this is just a quick a quick uh, summary. Uh, we will do voltage drop calculation. I just want you here, guys, to know what's the, this is called the nominal voltage, and this is the operating voltage from here to here. 
operating voltage, and this is system voltage, system volt. So this is right at the panel. See, I have 120 volt. Then I moved all the way 100 feet. Do you think you will find 120 after you moved 100 feet? You guys think you can have 120? You're lucky after you move 100 feet, depending on the conductor that you have, if you have 110 volt. Everybody knows the operating volt right at the equipment, right here. That's the operating volt. The system voltage right at the panel. And what's in bet what's the difference between them is a voltage drop. The difference between them is a voltage drop. Any question guys about that? Operating voltage concept versus uh, system voltage right at the panel. Always, by the way, if you end up with a voltage here, Rob, that's 130 from a system that's 120, you have, without transformer or anything, you have just invented new science. Or you made a mistake. <laughs> so without a transformer or a capacitor or anything else. Okay, so moving on to the operating. Next, here's the voltages. You guys have this one in your book. Please highlight it. We're going to be working on voltage drop calculation. Voltage drop is recommendation in the NEC code book, uh, 220.19a. And 220.19a, the NEC code book, yeah, 220.19a for uh, uh, brand circuits and for feeders, 220.2a. Um, 220, I mean 215, you say 220, 210, 210, 210, what am I, Round 10, 210, 210, and 215, the brand circuits and the feeders, 2a, 2a, thank you, 2a. If you guys go to these articles, it will tell you the voltage drop. The voltage drop is recommended to stay within 5%. How do we divide the 5%? Please be aware of that one. You divide your 5% either. Here's what we do as engineers. Here's how we do it. You have the feeder right in here and the branch circuit. We always go by 3% on the feeders and 2% by branch circuits. That's a common practice, engineering common practice is to allow a 3% on feeders. Anybody knows why we allow more on feeders than branch circuits? They're longer. Feeders tend to be longer. So you allow 3% on feeders, feeders, right? And 2% on branch circuits for a total of no more than, a total of no more than 5%. So, so do me a favor, um, uh, Nick, my friend. I have a voltage here. I have a 120 volt. I start with the 120 volt right here, the panel, 120 volt. If I cut 5% out of the 120, by the time I reach here, I have 95%, 95% of the 120. What's 95% of 120? Uh, no, the 95%, the operating voltage. How much? 114. 114 volt. So, and then in the process, how many amps, I, six volts I lost. I lost six volts. This is interesting because actually, my friend, you, you started with 120 at the panel. You end up with 114. Your equipment is functioning okay at 114. You make the code. Your equipment will function co correctly at this level, and you drop six volts in between. Why do we drop? Because of resistance. Are we going to do calculation for voltage drop, AC and DC? Yes, it's coming. So this is just the concept of, of voltage drop. Any questions about this? You can do the same calculation. I can put 480 here and do the same calc. How much the operating voltage acceptable here? Any question about voltage drop 3? Now, they, they also, 2 or 3, but this is not a common practice here. Um, the common practice for design is 3, 2. Questions, guys? Any questions? Okay, we'll move on to, so a couple of um, Romex. We talked yesterday, guys, about wiring with Romex, and you guys have done it with us. So a few th things about Romex I wanted to mention when you wire with the Romex. Um, they color code the cable. Anybody can tell me 14-2, what color, what color is 14-2? Four, or, or number number 14. Color when you go buy the cable. You guys buy it in the home people all the time. White. White. 14.2 and 14.3 is white. Color, the cable color. How about number 12? 
Yellow. Number 10. Number 8. Number 8 is not commonly used. They use black for number 8. You are absolutely right. It's start industry standard. I bet you, gosh, at least four years, four years, four to five years, they start color coding them. Now, if you're an inspector, Nick, I walk into your kitchen, and here's your receptacles right here, and I see all these white conductors right from 20 feet away. Right on the countertop, and guess what? You violated the code. You're bringing a number, number 14, because if it's number 12, it has to be one. It has to be, there's, there was a transient period. Oh, there's six color as well. No, no, no. This is just for inspection. This is industry standard, not code. Industry standard. But this four years ago, this guy. This four years ago, yep. Yeah. I wired with white everything almost. Yeah. So, okay. So, not a big deal. But Phil, when you become a project manager, you have an apartment building. And you are doing your own inspection before the inspector. So, you look like your company is good and smart. Knowing these industry standards, it makes you a smart project manager. You can look at the countertop and tell the electrician, I know that you did this wrong. You know, sometimes they fool you because there's still leftover of number of number uh, 12 that's white. I have in my basement leftover number 12 still. Okay, so that's this one I want you. Number raw mix, I believe you can get it up to number 8. Uh, I don't think number 8, number 6. I don't think you can even go higher than number six with raw mix. Raw mix. Um, so it's just a very, very limited, limited application cable. Okay, so that and the hardware that comes with it. A few things, guys, and I again, a few things when you're dealing with raw mix that you have to pay attention to. You stable them. Look at that 12 here and four and a half here. And if you're using plastic eight, can you guys highlight these three numbers? From a metallic box that has straps on it, 12. From a non-metallic box, 8. And in intervals, in, be, in between, you have to stable them at 4.5. Who cares? You guys are, you can wire your own, number one. And number two, also, as a project manager, walk around. Make sure you pay attention to these. Any question, guys? Any question about that? And we here, we are, we're supposed, right in here. Can you guys see that one? Right in here. We're supposed to leave um, uh, three inches for termination. Three inches for termination. Usually six inches from the point it enters, six inches from the point it enters all the way here. It has to be six inches and project out here three inches. Six inches from the point it enters, it comes out. And so here's a conductor coming out as it projects. From here to here, you need three inches. Anybody knows why? Because of termination. So for a total of six inches from the point it enters. Who cares? Project manager. So these are, um, Chris, these are what I like about these chapters that you guys have, the graphics. I mean, the graphics, this is better than a whole lot of reading the whole article. This is the whole article talks about it, guys. We looked at the articles yesterday, uh, the exceptions and all this good stuff. But these are really nice, um, nice graphics. Explain the rationale and the curvature requirement. In the what? The rationale of the curvature requirement. Oh, curve, right here. The idea is right here. That what's the alternative is to come and go this. Yeah. Now, if you go over here, and uh, you suppose it's a, it supposedly from a, a a scientific point of view, when you make an angle, it creates more resistance in the wire. Yep, you're creating, number one, creating more resistance in the wire. Number two, you're also damaging the insulation. You could, not saying, you could damage the insulation. But you're creating more resistance. That's where the loop is. It's, I, I think it's a code here more, for the most part about damaging the insulation because you could easily bend it and damage the insulation. Okay, that's nice saying both the same curvature of the curvature. So that's... It'll give you an, 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 the here? Five times diameter of the yeah. curvature. Yeah, that, that helps. That will help me, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's I like the yeah. the graphic with that. So as long as you keep they don't usually it you know, it's visual. You don't have to go measure it. Um a couple of things when you use raw mix guys, you have to protect it from physical damage. We use this all the time. So I'm coming from the basement 
it's bold and I need to take my romance over. It's bold. It looks ugly. I don't know who would ever do that, but you could. Um, to the house, we're, we're supposed to put it in a, a PVC or an EMT, at least an EMT. It happens in the basements a lot, guys. As you drop from the ceiling, go, go to outlets in a basement against the block, you have to put them on, I'm sorry, on EMTs. Um, and here's what we're talking about. See that EMT there? You drop the wires inside it. Um, a couple of things, guys, that could, uh, if you, if you cut this area here because of thermal insulation, caulking, whatever, sealing it so you don't have draft going on, then you have to derate. You have to derate. So for the most part, it's not a big deal to derate. So for example, let's say this is 12-3. Um, How many of them do I have? 12-3, I have three of them, right? All of them are carrying current, right? All of them are carrying current, so I have three times three equal nine. Nine conductors carrying current. I have to go the rate based on nine conductors carrying current. I assure you, for number twelve, after you do rate on number twelve, you still get your twenty amps or non-continuous and sixteen amp continuous out of number twelve. So don't sweat it too hard. If you do your math, so but you're supposed to do it because of uh, trapping the heat. Uh, hardware that goes with it, guys, you can look at this one as you go. Um, a couple of things. These are a couple of graphics that what you can do and what you cannot do. You can see that. Um, Isn't there an exception to the derating because of the distance of that? Can that be considered a nipple? Not here. You're right. And at 24 inches or less, here, but not here, which is weird. Not here. I think the idea is because it's in, in thermally... It, there's thermal insulation around all these conductors for the most part, not just the trab. So, a couple of hardwares, a couple of things that you can do and you cannot do. You can see how you can put vertically um, the conductors you're not supposed to. A um, couple of straps, guys, what you can strap and what you cannot strap. These are good code, code references. I want to highlight 3 8 and 2 6. If your conductor 3 8 or 2 6, then you can strap them at the bottom here. Can you guys see that? Otherwise, you have to have to go through um, through the rafters or, or or so forth. If if you're in the basement, so a, a couple of things that you that you do. Uh, there is another picture about raw mix here. Let's go for a screw. Your ground. If you when you guys wire with boxes, you get the, your ground. Um, Couple of, a couple of things about how to switch. Like we said, you're coming from the top here and you go on a conduit all the way down um, into your receptacles in, a, in, in the basement. Couple of things. That, by the way, for our project, the only thing you need to pay attention to is uh, probably the utility room. Everything is finished. Everything is fished in. So these applications will not apply to our project. But every time you go on concrete, you need to put them in an EMT conduit. Couple of applications where you can grab all these guys and bring them down in a nice. You don't have to do that. You you guys probably have seen how some contractors put a, a board behind here, right? You see that? Where people put some type of a board right here and they drop all the wires right here. That's okay. Um, that's okay too. But if I have, if this is 18 inches or less, I don't have to derate because I'm not putting thermal insulation. Remember, the only time you have to do it is if you stop the thermal cocking it. You're not cocking here, right? It's open. So if you keep it 18 inches, you don't need, um, it, is it 24 inches or less? You don't have to do it here. No cocking. Yes, sir. Why would you want to cock? Well, you're going from the first floor to the second floor for draft. Oh. You don't draft to go from one to another. And also that drafting, um, for the most part, drafting. Here, recycling from one floor to another, it has to go through the, the right channels. Okay, um, this is a nice picture, guys. If you have not seen residential, I know you wired, you should have wired with us where well, you can get your neutral, you can get your ground. Uh, most of the time, these are tied together, bonded if it's residential service at the service, and then you take all your service breakers down. 
up to this point, I really thought uh, MC cable and AC cable. Um, did you guys wear with AC cable and MC cable last year? MC cable. Here's my take on MC and AC cable. If you are in residential, your your wiring methods of choice for this project is what? Romex, no question asked. Okay. If you go to commercial building, your wiring of choice, two choices. If you, if the project you're on a cheap project, then you do um, AC cable. A good design project, engineering project will use an MC cable, more robust, better insulation, and so forth. Or of course you can do conduits too, or end. So. That's why we talk too much about these guys as we go into the commercial projects and how to cut them and all the stuff, the right types of cutting. You talk about the hardware that goes into it. Um, a few things to remember as a project manager or as an installer. Remember an inch and a half, guys, that you have to maintain here. Everybody knows that you have to maintain from that hole an inch and a half. If you can't maintain it, then you have to put that plate, steel plate, right? So you can drill right through it. You cannot drill a screwdriver right to it. Everybody's familiar with these terms? Either you maintain an inch and a half from the, the edge of the hole into the stud, side of the stud. You cannot, and sometimes you can't, because it's not two by four, it's two by two. Sometimes we have a two by two in the basements. If you can't do that, then you can put an inch, um, um, a plate, and they actually tell you the, the width of the thickness of the plate. Can you guys see the thickness of the plate that you're supposed to put? At least one sixteenth of an inch. Really, everything that I say, guys, nobody's going to ask you unless you become a project manager and you can install your own equipment. So, um, Ashley, my friend, you walk in and you inspect your own work. If you have to stable multiple cables, that stabler has to be rated for multiple cables, as you can see right here. This is all what I'm saying right now, guys, is, is a project manager. Um, or electrician, but you guys are not going to be licensed for the most part to do electrical work. Okay, all the hardware that comes with it. Um, if you are using a metal stud, how many how many of you guys have seen a house with metal studs? Is it coming? Not coming. But if you have a house or a building, it doesn't have to be an office. We can use Romex in certain offices, guys, depending on the structure and the type. No problem. Bad design. Bad design, but no problem. Um, then you have to have an insulation. If it's Romex, you have to put this little insulation. Anybody knows why? As you pull the Romex through the metallic, what's going to happen to the to the uh, jacket? You're going to screw up the jacket. So that's common sense. I mean, even um, even if you don't know that, we'll 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 do common sense. Um, if you have to have a groove like this, then you have to also cover it, guys, with a plate. So there's a lot of insulation here. So you can't run a, a screwdriver right into it. Moving into, okay, I'm going to move directly into a few things here. Yeah, this is more common mistake, guys. And Chris, have you seen where they use the cold air space return? This is your cold air space return. They use they don't use ducts as return. They use the cavity as return. To save money, guys, um, commercially they have been using the plenum ceiling as return for years. Plenum ceiling, they don't duck back. They give the air here. I think we have, this one has probably return because it's old, but they will, you'll, you'll see around the, the lights, some lights, guys, you have that space around the fixtures. That's because the air, returning air, after you push the heat in, the air has to circulate. The cold air is supposed to go, be pulled up back to the air handling unit. You heat it, you bring it back, and so forth. So long story short, if you use the cavity in a, in a residential building like this, as your air return, not air supply, you can't use the air supply. Air supply has to be a duct. If you use it, then they don't want you to go vertical or you put any equipment in this cavity. Does that make sense? You can't go horizontal because, God, how are you going to do it otherwise? You can cut through it. Cut through it, no problem, because otherwise it would be misery. <laughs> but you can't go through. It makes sense, guys, because they don't want you to put equipment or cables in the air return. Anybody knows why? If I have a fire over here and smoke, and this is an air return, it will be pulling all the smoke and spreading all over in the house. 
to the, then you take it to in a house you take it to the furnace and the furnace is going to heat that smoke and send it to every room in your in your house that would be cool huh so anyway any question about this so pay attention to that one if it's the cavity the way you know how do you know nick your project manager walk in how do you know if this is going to be a cavity what they do is they they put that little piece right in here um just a little piece at the bottom you guys have seen them and that's your return that's the opening and then the sheetrock will go over it and that allows the air to go back you, any not in not out back return any question as about this project manager again good to know if you're wiring if you're working as a designer it's a good idea if you're working a project manager great idea because you now you're inspecting your own work before you the inspector comes you know what happened tell if you're a project manager and you know all these little things the details it saves you a lot of money while the electricians are working if, if they are, they should know that but if they are not doing it you can bring it to their attention right on the spot so you save some money instead of return and so forth so a lot of these guys for designers it's a it's a good idea a lot of hardware that goes with um, armor cable um for the most part emt conduits a lot of conduits guys and we'll talk about conduits in a second if you chris if you don't know anything about conduits when you support a conduit for the most part at 10 feet in between the support and every three feet every three feet from here and 10 feet in between with some exception and distances for rigid and so forth that's kind of one thing to know um we will talk more about rigid intermediate guys as we go into commercial industrial and emt i want you to understand in residential we use romics only we're going to be using romics only emt we're going to be using it in very limited in the utility room um, EMT, you're looking at it right in there, right in there. Uh, you support it from every box or opening every three feet, every three feet, no more than three feet, in between 10 feet. Um, any question is about this, and you can't do it. The most common conduit that you'll be encountering, uh, basically, uh, EMT. EMT, Dustin, I can wire, you can wire. 90% uh, of the projects, be, residential ROMICs, but non-residential, 90% of your projects, you're going to be wiring them with EMT and MC cable. 90% of it. There will be a special applications for PVC, a special applications for rigid, but between ROMICs and EMT, you covered 90% of your projects. um a couple of cables guys different type of 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 mc um i want to go directly now your your book talks about guys have a nice com comparison tables between different um different application can you do me a favor can you grab your book the ones who have it guys and go to page 127. i want you if you haven't read this chapter i really would like you to look at this at this between ac and mc cable uh, and I think it's, I don't know if it's, okay, let me see if I can get it. Okay, 12, okay. Terminals, we talked about this yesterday. The wires, okay. This is table 412, 411, 412. This is the table that we're looking, that you guys are looking at, right? Table, um, uh, table uh, 412, page 126 and 127. Page 126 and 127. I want to bring to your attention, guys, a few things. Number one, let me tell you, there are two cables. They look alike. Anybody knows the difference between AC and MC cable? MC cable, I'll bring these when we do the commercial. MC cable have a fully insulated grounding conductor, right? Green. Um, AC cable does not have this, it has this aluminum stripe with it. Um, AC cable, if you guys look at, there's a lot of comparison between them, but I want to bring to your attention, very important one, if you will highlight a few very important ones, I, in my book anyway, um, the very important one is conductor size. Conductor size right in here, guys, you should be able to see conductor size. I want you to look at the largest conductor AC that you can buy. What's the largest conductor AC you can buy? Conductor size number one, what's the largest conductor MC you can buy. Can you guys see it? Conductor size and type. 
you can buy up to 2,000 KCM MC cable. Can you, I'm looking at page, by the way, page 126. Page 126, one, two, three, four, the four row. So conductor size, you're limited to number one versus two, two, uh, 200, 2,000 KCM. So what would that give you? MC cable is more well-respected cable. You can get them in uh, different colors. They give you the colors underneath them, the bonding, the grounding, the insulation that you can get them through, um, and the armor, the location where you can where you can put them, minimum radius, pushing, support, and voltages. Uh, I want you guys to go to two things. So number one is the size. Number two is, I don't think it's here, it's in the second page. Okay, let's get that one. So you highlight the size. Num number two, I want you to highlight one, one major difference between them, the voltages. Look at the voltage here and the voltage. AC cable is only a low voltage cable. If you look at the MC cable, I, I can buy, buy a medium voltage MC cable. Can you guys see that? Medium voltage MC cable, you can buy them in the higher voltages. Uh, the second thing I want you guys to highlight is the single most important rub difference between them is the ambicity. Can you guys see what's the ambicity for, for each one of them? If you have an AC cable, Phil, my friend, if you have an AC cable, then you have to go to which column? 60 degree column. If you have an MC cable, which column are you allowed to go to? In an MC cable, uh, no mission NEC type MC cable, um, uh, when or race with ambicity determined in according with 310.15. If you have an MC cable, then you have to go follow the same rules for everything else. But if you have an AC cable, you are defaulted to where? To 60 degree column. For example, I have an MC cable that has four out. Remember the four out conductor, guys? Four out is more than number one. So which column are you going to go to? 75 degree column. I have a cable, MC cable, that's number one. Number one MC cable is defaulted to which column? 60. Are you guys with me? With the AC, the diff major difference. AC cable is, is like Romex, industry Romex, 60 degree column. MC cable will respect it. You can use it under 75 degree column and so forth. So that's a major difference. And the other one is the locations. Can you guys see the locations? Um, for the most part, AC cable is a dry location. Both of them actually for a dry location. Oh, both of them for a dry location, but they make an MC cable for wet location too, and direct buried. But AC cable is mostly dry location. Um, MC cable you can buy it where wet location, big deal. So I what I'm and there is a lot of details, guys. What I want to get into your brain is every time you hear MC, it's the best cable that you can use. Done. Bigger conductor, higher voltages, bigger sizes, more amps. Um, best armor cable yeah yeah it's best cable so when a lot of engineering firms guys uh, when i work for them they specify okay uh, brand circuits and failure shall be minimum mc cable so ac cable is out the window okay so that's what i want to highlight from that one support you guys can read this with the ambition of the voltage and the sizes very important and the uses so these, any question guys about these two cables? Any question about these two cables? Any question about these two cables? So the MC cable would probably be A little bit more expensive. Yes. And the ground, the MC cable too. Uh, we mentioned that the MC cable has a ground in it. MC uh, ground, an insulated grounding conductor. Um... Look at this. I don't know how many of you would pay attention to this. Uh, service. Can I use it for a service? An AC cable? No. MC cable? Yes. Nick, you asked me about a table in the NEC code book that compare between them. This is one of the best tables, guys, that you can read to compare between these two tables. Now, now, who cares? Take this, Rob. I have a service. I will bring my conductor service from outdoor to the panel. Can I use an AC cable? Or Romex, God forbid. No. My only option is SE cable or MC cable. But for grand circuits, no problem. Grand circuits and theaters, that's a service. I can't emphasize, guys, there are three circuits in the code. 
feeder, brand circuit, and service. Service is the most uh, stringent requirement on it. So that's a major difference between the two. Why do they insulate the ground? A lot of countries do. It's better shield, better. Well, one of the things is interference too. It doesn't catch interference when you tie it um, safer when you work around it. Have you ever opened a panel that has all the ground and bare, and and you're you're working so your your chances of that bare conductor touching something hot is higher. You know what I mean? So there's safety factors and uh, so that's that would be my two senses on that. The second thing I want to talk, any question guys about the two cables? So have I convinced you of MC cable yet? If I haven't, I haven't done a good job. MC cable, no question asked. The second thing they have guys between you is uh, they're comparing between three conduits. One, two, three, four. Can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor and write what I'm going to write right here? When it comes EMT conduit, probably 90% of the time, you're going to be using it commercial as well as industrial. 90% of the time. So if you have to wire with conduit for brand circuits or feeders, you're going to start with EMT. Your default, EMT. Okay? Now, moving into PVC. You can't, when would you use PVC, guys? You do PVC in wet locations. Wet location. If you have a wet location fill underground, outdoor, um, a wet, especially underground, especially underground, a good application to have a PVC. Okay? So now, and that probably would be, if I'm just going to throw a percentage, you will encounter this one probably 20% of the time. Again, but they don't add to 100, so don't yell at me. Rigid and intermediate here is for severe physical protection. You, need, you have severe physical protection. If you have a severe physical protection, you need them. A good example is gas stations, explosions, a car driving right into the conduit. That's when you use rigid, really. Otherwise, don't you even mention rigid. Hard to work with, threaded. I'm sorry, I'm in page uh, 137. 137. Any question guys about these three conduits? Everybody knows the difference between a cable and a conduit? Right? A conduit, you can fill it yourself. A cable is already filled for you. A conduit can be non-flexible, like that baby here, or it can be flexible, flexible conduit. So sometimes you look at a conduit and you can't really tell if it's a cable or a conduit because they look alike. Have you guys seen and looked around and they look, especially the flexible conduits and the AC and MC cable, they almost look alike. AC cable is manufactured, the conductors in it, the cables, the conduits, you pull conductors inside them. Any question about this? A couple of things about the structure and the bushings to protect. Most of the time, guys, you need, um, I like to highlight this. If you have a conductor number four or more, you pull more, four or more, again, project manager only, you need to put a, a, a pu pushings, insulation pushing, so when you pull the conductor, you don't damage damage the insulation. So, and bends, it talks about bends here, all conduits, you can't bend them more. How many bends can I put in a conduit? No more than 360. No more than 360. Uh, bushings, we talked about the bushings. Um, Cinderfell, wet location. Um, so for the most part, and you, it talks rigid. You can't put rigid underground, but it's really not a good idea to put rigid underground. Uh, moving into a few other application in concrete. Can I put it in concrete? Yes, all of them. You almost can't put all of them in concrete. Um, so a lot of application, guys, where it tells you the best application, but if you wrote the stuff that I told you, really, if you're in a wet location, PVC, if everywhere else, EMT, unless you have to have physical protection, then you use rigid. Done. You know. 
length. They talk about the length, guys, between all of them, and you can you can look um, the material, um, steel galvanized, the IMC rigid. You can have rigid. Let me just talk a little bit about the material. Look at the rigid. When it comes to rigid, and I talk about this as we go to the commercial, guys. If you look at rigid, uh, it comes in steel galvanized, aluminum, red brass, and stainless steel. <coughs> a lot of applications. Where would you use red brass? You're at the casino up north gambling, right? Or not. And you're bringing a circuit right in the fountains. It doesn't have to be in the casino, right here. Right into the fountain, right? These fountains and you wire it. If you wire a place that's severe corrosion, that's right into a water. A good application for red brass, stainless steel, severe corrosion. That's a good application for brass or red steel. So we'll talk about this one in the commercial, guys, and industrial. Stainless steel, oh, same thing. Stainless steel, yep, okay. corrosion. Uh, rough edges. They have fittings. They have their own fittings and so forth. Yeah, everything comes with fittings. Uh, a couple of things, guys, I want to major difference, guys. I don't know if you know, um, in sizes, rigid, look at the sizes that you can buy rigid and PVC versus uh, EMT and intermediate. So I need, I need a six. Here's how I can check you. I said, can we have a six inch EMT conduit? Do they make a six inch EMT conduit? No. Do they make a six inch PVC? Yes. Do they make a six inch rigid? Yes. Uh, intermediate? No. So I want you guys to remember PVC and rigid are the only two conduits. Well, there's a couple of other conduits, ma main conduits that they, they go as high as to six inch conduits. So that's, I think that's a major advantage, right? Now we can get them uh, bigger. Threaded, um, everybody knows that guys, only rigid and intermediate are, are threaded, P, uh, PBC, PVC, and EMT are non-threaded. Everybody knows that, right? Threaded, non-threaded. Underground, you can use all of them, but the preferred one is PVC. Weight, um, where, where would you use aluminum rigid? Where would you use aluminum rigid conduit? Aluminum rigid conduit here is a good application for it if, if weight is an option, is, is, a, is, a, is a, an issue. If you need rigid and weight is an issue, what's better than aluminum rigid to use? Instead, what alternative? Steel, brass, stainless steel. So instead of doing that, aluminum becomes a good option if weight is an issue <laughs> for certain projects. Okay, so that's that. Any question, guys, about these? And I know I went through them more. I will promise you guys, rigid, and uh, we will touch on these as we go in the commercial because we really, this is not where the good application for it. Um, okay, the last one I want you guys to go, and please, if you don't want to read anything in this chapter, please read these because these are the single most important ones. Um, the cables. Now we went from cable to conduit, and each one of them has an article for it. In three, in three tables, guys, summarize almost all chapter three in the code. In three tables. So if you can, uh, if you look at the flexible metallic conduit, liquid type flexible metallic conduit, or liquid type flexible non-metallic conduit. Now, when would I use flexible? You know that flex, guys, that we use. When would you use flex? Only to tie to equipment. That's it. Can I use flex to power Dunwoody? Bad idea. Yes, bad idea. Anybody, one of you guys have pulled conductors in flex? It's, is it easy to pull conductors? Steel or any one of them. All the flex for brand circuits and, and unreal. It's hard to work with. So, so when you when you look at this article, here's come to your mind. I'm gonna write here. The, all of these is tie to equipment. Or lights, and the only reason for where you where we use it, Chris, is for flexibility and absorb vibration. 
We have an air hand you're going to sitting and and imagine if you rigid it, what's going to happen? It's going to transfer that all that vibration right into every single area in the building and every single office is going to start humming and you hear from all the secretaries and everybody else in the office that things are not working and it's annoying. So tight equipment. So what's the difference between them? Um, if you are tying in wet location, the only difference this is wet location, really. So and this is will make this one what? Dry. That's the major difference. All of them is tying, all of them guys is tying two equipment and light. We use the two, the last two, liquid tight or metallic or non-metallic, we use them for wet look anything in a wet location, that's what you use. It used to be they allow you flex. To use flex outdoor, no longer available. You have to use liquid tight or metallic or non-metallic for any wet location. Doesn't have to be outdoor, any wet location. And we know what wet location is. Wet location is saturation of water. Outdoor, any place where there's a lot of saturation of water. Any question guys about that? That's really us. That's the, the major difference. Uh, tied to equipment and, and, uh, and lights. Tied to equipment and lights. Um, so that's that's what I want to highlight. Um, Join that location exposed, and we've got that one about this part. These particular articles. Uh, where are we here? Uh, grounding, uh, flex, a uh, grounding. Uh, for our application, you have to pull an equipment grounding conductor. So if you're tying a flex to an air handling unit, a motor, a fan, whatever, you need to have an equipment ground conductor. There's some exceptions, fixtures up to six feet. If you're tying to a fixture up to six feet, they allow the shield of the coax to act as an equipment ground conductor, six feet only. You go seven feet, you have to pull an equipment ground conductor with it. So for all practical reasons, you have to pull an equipment ground conductor with it, right? Unless in exception for fix, light fixtures, you can use the shield up to six inches, six uh, feet. And also they have limitation on the amps that you can pull out of it. So you can, uh, if you guys look at the 20 amps, most of them are 20 amps, six feet, um, 20 amps, six feet. Uh, this is obviously done, this is, uh, you have to pull equipment run conductor. This baby here doesn't have, it's all completely non-metallic. When you think of a conduit, guys, always think, do I need, for example, take this. Do I need an equipment ground conductor here? By code. No. The shield of the EMP conduit acts as an equipment ground conductor. Done. Rigid, no need. Uh, intermediate, no need. PVC, you need because non-metallic. Uh, flexible, all of them you need with one exception when you tie to lights. Any question, guys? Any question about that? That what would that make you when you know all this stuff, guys? A better designer, a better project manager. So when you're taking up a project and you're going to tie to the equipment, you have to account for a six feet. Most of the time, guys, we have six, five to six feet from the disconnect. You put your disconnect to the wall and you take your flexible metallic conduit, five to six feet, and you tie it to the equipment. So it's vibration, whatever, moving, ease of movement um, will be much easier. Okay, so that's my my flex. Uh, we're still in the flex. We talk about the grounding for the flex, listed length. Um, did we see the sizes? All of these come uh, up to four feet, if I remember that right. Uh, sizes. Here you go. All of them you can buy them up to four feet. Did they say four feet? Four inches. Thank you. That will be a big one, huh? Four, <laughs> four inches. They can you can put them in four inches. I want to bring to your attention. This is the single most important one about the, the difference between them. What location? No. Yes. Yes. For each one of them. Do me a favor, Phil. When we go commercial industrial, I will actually make you go back to these tables because this is one of the best tables I ever seen that compared them side by side. Guys, if you want to go get this information from the code, it will take you at least a couple of hours to pull from every article. It's really nicely put together. Pull all the info from all these articles side by side for you and I so we can compare the, the conduits. Any question, my friend? Yes, sir. Um, I had a question about um, when you're tying uh, fixtures together like this. 
um, when you're using MC cable, does that cable come without the, the grounding conductor? MC always come with a ground. Always does. Yep. Okay, so. So this is not an issue. Okay. That's if you're using cables, not an issue here. We're using this. We're talking about flexible conduits. Okay. Yeah, cables come with it. With it, it's not an issue. Okay. No. Yeah. Some people, guys, good point, Nick. Some people use instead of using a flex to tie to the equipment, they use an MC cable. No problem. You grab an MC cable and you tie it to the equipment. That will get your vibration to it, so it's flexible. So the wiring methods, different wiring methods. Okay, the last one, and I promise I'm going to give you, shall we have a break? Let's take a break.